Hi, everyone. My name is Allison Sullivan, and I'm here today to talk about finding a job. I uh, talk about jobs and, and how to find a job a lot as a uh, part of the communications team at Glassdoor. For those of you who don't know, Glassdoor is a jobs and review site. Uh, our mission is really to help everyone find a job and company they love, which is why I'm here to talk to you today. Before Glassdoor, I was just like yourself. I'm a University of Iowa graduate. I graduated class of 2014. And so I remember after graduating, uh, having a lot of the same questions you probably have now about how do I prepare for a job? How do I find one? And, and what do I do when I'm going through the process? So those are all questions I'm hoping to answer for you today and uh, get you started on the right foot as uh, right after graduation. All right. Going to share my screen here for some materials that will help. And I can share these around after as well. All right. So really, I'm going to talk through four steps to finding a job. Uh, no matter what, no matter what the economy or the job uh, landscape is like, the, the good news is that there's really four key steps that will take you through the job search process. One is finding the right opportunity. Perfecting your application materials is two. For uh, the third step is preparing for the interview. And finally, sealing the de deal and negotiating. So those are all the four steps we'll talk through today. So first, finding the right opportunity. Really, that means doing your research, identifying what are the skills and experience you've uh, accumulated over the last couple of years, and how does that align with your career goals? Um, so here's some things to think about. What are the experiences that you've had? What are your career goals? Um, what have you studied and, and what do you really want in that first job? Then as you are going through your research, uh, whether it's online or um, talking with friends and family, uh, look at where are the opportunities and, and are those companies places you wanna work? Do they have good salary and benefits? Uh, is the location where you want to be, whether it's you wanna be where you currently are or move somewhere else? And then also uh, make sure to go on Glassdoor. What are their reviews and ratings like and, and what do employees say? So. I think the biggest way to start off your job search on the right foot is to do your research. And that's something any journalism student or student really, um, I'm sure is very familiar with. Doing your research is really gonna help uh, you get a start the job search on the right foot and, and just uh, equip yourself with a lot of information to, to find the opportunities that make sense for you. And so here are some ways too, you can create customized job alerts on Glassdoor. Make sure to network with your friends, family, uh, professors to understand what are opportunities out there for you. Um, and also don't, don't uh, hesitate to network as well. Call people up, have some video chats. The more you get out there, the more opportunities you'll find. All right, secondly, perfecting your application materials. There, depending upon the job, there might be other uh, materials, but really the two core ones we're gonna talk about today is your resume and your cover letter. So your resume is a very clear and, and tactical uh, list of your experiences. Even though you're just starting out in the job search, uh, it's okay. Even if you don't have a lot of work experience, you do have a lot of different experiences. So really think about uh, everything from curriculars to class projects or internships, distill all of those into a one-page resume um, and, and make sure it really aligns with the job description as well. Um, any hiring manager will be looking at your experiences and how they map to that job listing. So, so making sure they feel very aligned is, is going to be really important. Here I've outlined really the six key components of sort of the anatomy of a perfect cover letter, or sorry, resume. And so that talks about contact information, um, work experience, skills, and, and listing out your education. All right, so next is your cover letter. Basically, if your resume is really a bulleted list of all of your experiences, um, your cover letter is really going to dig into the story of your career and how all of those experiences make you a great fit for your role. So I've also highlighted here some really key things to include in your cover letter. 
Again, your contact information is going to be really important. Uh, making sure you have a greeting uh, to whoever, whoever the hiring manager is. Um, introducing yourself and why you think you're a good fit. Weaving together all of the skills and experiences in, in more of a narrative form. And then also closing it out with a call to action, saying something like, I'm really excited to hear from you. That just shows that uh, you are truly excited for this role and, and you are uh, waiting to hear back from them. Um, one other thing I would say uh, that's good advice for both your cover letter and your resume is use data or some type of metrics wherever you can. Uh, a great example is if you interned at a newspaper, you wrote five articles weekly under a daily deadline. Something like that where you can show numbers uh, is really impressive uh, to hiring managers and, and helps quantify the experience that you have. All right, so you have uh, great materials. Uh, they align really well with the job posting. Um, and also what's really important is make sure they're peer reviewed. You've spent a lot of time crafting these materials, so have someone else, whether it's a family member or a friend, read, read through them and make sure that there's no small uh, grammatical errors and everything makes sense. Um, now, step three is preparing for the interview. You've uh, submitted your materials and now they're, they wanna talk with you and that's really great and exciting. And um, there uh, are a lot of different ways, uh, a lot of different interviews that you might experience whether it's skills-based, you could have one-on-one -on -one conversations. You might also uh, encounter something called a panel interview where you you're talking to multiple people at the same time. No matter what, here are some uh, ways that you can prep for an interview. I highly recommend that you uh, do as much preparation as you can. That's really going to help you enter an interview uh, conversation feeling really confident, feeling prepared, and that allows you to really have your personality shine and really see it as a conversation and not just a back and forth. Um, some basic things to know, know about the company you're applying for. Know the leaders, know if there's any big news that's happened. Uh, making sure that you're, you're familiar with what's happening with the company now is going to signal to any hiring uh, uh, manager that you're keeping an eye on the company and that you're really excited. Also practice a lot. There's a lot of resources out there, including at Glassdoor, about common interview questions. Read through all of them, practice yourself, um, practice, in, practice with friends or family. The more that you feel really confident in answering those questions, the more confident you're going to be um, with any question that comes your way during the interview process. And Confidence is really key. It shows, um, it allows you to be excited and it allows you really to let your personality shine through um, when having these conversations. Um, that's also going to be really important too, as um, a lot of you will probably be interviewed more online, on camera, having virtual video uh, interviews. And so being confident and having concise answers uh, through these virtual interviews will really go a long way. Oh, and also one thing to add, one important thing to add uh, in your prep is think about some questions you can ask during the interview. Oftentimes, uh, interviewers will wrap up a conversation by saying, do you have any questions for me? I'm happy to, add, to answer anything. And so coming prepared with some questions will, be, will really impress them and show that you're thinking about uh, what it's like to work there and that you're excited. So in addition to prep, how do you structure some of your interview responses? So I think the biggest thing to think about is how are you telling a story? And if you're a communicator or a journalist, this should be hopefully really fun. You're telling the story about what are your career aspirations, how those goals and your experience and this job that you're applying for really all align. So be authentic, um, but also be concise and share specific examples. A lot of that um, is, is really important and will help you have a great interview conversation and also be positive, have energy, um, do what you need to do to really help um, set yourself up to have a great conversation. Then after the interview, one small thing I highly recommend for people, write a thank you note. 
Um, this can be whether or not you interview with one person or maybe three or four people, send each of them uh, just a very short one or two sentence thank you note. That just shows, um, it's a very thoughtful, short, or very simple uh, touch that um, is really gonna be impressive. I know that when I interview people and if I ever get a thank you note, I really appreciate it. And it just is that little extra sh step and um, that shows that they're ex they had a good conversation with you. And um, again, that they're really excited for that role. I also think it's okay that if you don't hear from a company after a week, it's okay to follow up with that hiring manager or that recruiter. Just say that you're checking in, you hadn't heard back, and you're wondering what are the next steps. Those things make sure and signal to them that you're still very much interested. So give it some time, but don't be afraid to follow up if you don't hear back. All right, so we've gone through the interview process. Now, what are some of those final things to expect and think about? If you're if you get to that final phase and you're maybe considering accepting a job offer. First off is put together a little bit of a evaluation checklist. Now that you have an offer on the table, think about are the day to day responsibilities things that you're still excited for now knowing all that you know about the company and about the role. Is there room to grow. This is really important for your first job. Once you are on the job for a while, you know the ropes, are there opportunities for you to continue to learn new things and grow? I think that's really important for your first job. So make sure to ask about that during the interview process and also make sure before you accept a job that you feel like that's uh, something that's there. Um, also just make sure that you are excited about working at the company um, and, and also as well, uh, Let's talk a little bit about salary and benefits. So I know talking about salary or compensation can feel really intimidating, especially in your first job. But when you do have that first offer, don't be afraid to try and negotiate. Um, there are a lot of tools out there, um, including at Glassdoor. We have a salary uh, estimator tool where you can get a customized uh, estimate of your market value. Um, all of these tools out here are uh, really designed to help you feel informed about what your pay potential might be. So you'll never lose a job offer by asking to negotiate. So just take that first step. It doesn't have to be perfect, but talk about it and you never know. You might get a little more than that initial offer and that's great. Um, it's a great way to make sure that you're getting a uh, fair and uh, good pay for, for the work that you're going to do. And then finally, make sure to review the offer letter. If there's anything that you're not sure, you know, words like non-disclosure and non-compete, uh, Google it or ask some family and friends. I know you might be really excited to accept your first job, but just making sure to read between, uh, read the finer print is, is always a good thing. And, and also, hiring managers are happy to answer questions too if you're if you're reading that contract and, and not really quite sure what to do. But once you've done it and everything feels great, then it's time to accept the offer, which is really exciting. All right, that was a very quick uh, run through of some of the four basic steps of finding a job. Um, there are obviously tons of resources out there today, including myself. Feel free to find me. Um, my name is Allison Sullivan on LinkedIn. I'm happy to answer any questions or direct you to great Glassdoor resources. Um, I've also included here on the screen uh, just a couple examples of great re career guides that we have on Glassdoor that will help answer uh, everything from prepping for interviews, just getting a job or negotiating your salary, um, just go into glassdoor.com slash blog and uh, have, uh, there's a lot of great resources there for you. I know that they have helped me in previous jobs prepare for those roles. So I'm, I'm sure that they can be a resource for you too. Well, that uh, is just a quick look at some of the tips to getting a job. Um, I hope this was helpful for you guys today, and uh, I wish you best of luck on those first jobs. Um, I know you're going to be great. 
you're going to have a great career, learn lots of stuff, and uh, make sure to share some of those tips with other people as you uh, learn and grow yourself.